On today's show, Elsa returns with much on her mind, also a terrifying tale of a dastardly hunter. This is Vulo Lives. I'm Vulo the Face Borrower, here once again with Elsa of Arendelle. Welcome back to the show. How have things been since we last talked? Well, I've had a lot of time to think since my unjust cancellation. Over the, uh, slavery thing? Over the staffing misunderstanding, yes. Are you still cancelled? What? No, that was more than a year ago. So the public has moved on. I actually got pretty lucky in that regard. I don't know if you remember, but the Will Smith slapping thing happened around the same time and overshadowed my own situation. So, what'd you spend your time thinking about? During the brief period of time people criticized you online. I know what you're doing, and I will not be baited. <laughs> Fair enough. Have you heard the song Walk the Dinosaur? Uh, boom boom, akalakalaka boom? That's the one, yes. Uh, apparently the One True Moon is also familiar with the song. It was a big hit, and it's all I've been thinking about. You've only been thinking about Walk the Dinosaur? While I was sitting around waiting for my cancellation to end, I started listening to my parents' old records. Were the Arendelle Royals big into funk? Oh, they had all sorts of albums. Confiscated from the peasants, of course. Unpaid taxes, heresy, you know. I don't, but go on. I was listening to What's Up Dog, the third album by Was Not Was, when Walk the Dinosaur came on and I was mesmerized. It's a good song. I just kept repeating it over and over again. At first enchanted by the beat, but then... Something about the lyrics began to catch my wonder. Boom boom, akalaka laka boom. Yes, that, but also every other line. The longer I listened, the more I became convinced that Walk the Dinosaur was actually music's most intricately designed puzzle box. Boom. Boom, akalaka boom boom, yes. Well, I can't wait to hear more about this. Are you being fresh with me? No, I desperately want to hear about this Walk the Dinosaur puzzle. I realize I sound sarcastic, but that's just kind of my voice. If I detect a hint of freshness... Nothing but rot over here. Let's start with the first line. Boom boom, akalakalaka boom. That's not the line I meant, but keep that in mind. <laughs> I, I certainly will. It was a night like this, 40 million years ago. The time of dinosaurs. Indeed, but that line also contains the key to the puzzle box. Puzzle boxes typically don't have keys, but go on. Was that freshness? Maybe? Okay, it definitely was. I apologize. It was a night like this 40 million years ago. Upon first listening to the song, I thought the events were taking place in the past, but no. When are they taking place? There are two simultaneous timelines being presented, the past and the present, linked through the song's themes and events. A night 40 million years ago was very similar to a night that is just now happening. Interesting. I lit a cigarette, picked up a monkey's skull to go. This is the second part of the key. A cigarette is undeniably not of the dinosaur era, but who in modern times would grab a monkey's skull to go? A real freak, that's who. Do you see what I'm getting at, though? Yeah, it's mixing elements of the past and the present. Good, good. Now the next lines. The sun was spitting fire, the sky was blue as ice. I felt a little tired, so I watched Miami Vice and walked the dinosaur. I walked the dinosaur. The 2006 Miami Vice movie by Michael Mann was pretty good, if you haven't seen it. The sun was spitting fire, the sky was blue as ice, but it's night! It was a night like this! Oh. 
Hmm. Miami Vice, the TV show from the 80s, was airing at 9 p.m. when Walk the Dinosaur was released. Why was the sun spitting fire at 9 p.m.? Why was the sky blue as ice? What is Walking the Dinosaur? I don't know. What is it? Walking the Dinosaur is dying in a mass extinction event. The sun wasn't spitting fire. Nuclear hellfire was raining down, killing the sleepy Miami Vice viewer and every other human on the planet. On that note, let's take a quick break and play an important public service announcement that was sent to me on VHS. Have you seen this girl? Her name is Becky Ann, and she just might be the most dangerous person in the world. Children at play. Is this the sound of domestic peace? Not if one of the children is Becky Ann. Becky Ann is the only human alive known to have committed all 12 sins. Yes, even the 12th. If you encounter Becky Ann, do not approach her. Do not agree to play one of her marble games. The marbles may be standard, but the rules are those of sin and death. We are legally required to mention that Becky Ann has never been formally convicted of any crime. If there is a knocking at your door and you open it to find Becky Ann, do not let her in. Do not respond to her riddle about the three ropes. Becky Ann has access to a hot air balloon. She could be anywhere. Stay safe. Stay vigilant. Stay away from Becky Ann. Well... I'll, I'll do my best to avoid her. Open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. We've opened the door to nuclear apocalypse. Get on the floor, duck and cover if you will, but everyone is going to walk the path of the dinosaurs, the path that leads to oblivion. What, uh, what comes next in the song? There's some Flintstones romance stuff. I met you in a cave, you are painting buffalo. I said I'd be your S-word, follow wherever you go. S word? I don't want to say the word given my recent cancellation hardships. Oh, <laughs> slave. That night we split a rattlesnake and danced beneath the stars. You fell asleep, I stayed awake and watched the passing cars and walked the dinosaur. I walked the dinosaur. Again, the past interwoven with the present, the caves, the cars, both timelines reaching the same end, walking the dinosaur, dying in an apocalypse. This is interesting stuff. One night I dreamed of New York. You and I roasting blue pork in the Statue of Liberty's torch. Elvis landed in a rocket ship, healed a couple of lepers and disappeared. But where was his beard? You're really going to need to explain that one. It's a prophetic dream. A modern figure of secular worship, Elvis, appears in the role of the Lord Christ. It's another blending of eras. The Elvis Christ performs a handful of rudimentary miracles and disappears, failing to fundamentally alter the path humanity is walking towards doomsday. We will not be saved, not by the religious saviors of old, nor the secular idols of the modern era. Ah. I hate that this is starting to make sense to me. Now here comes the linchpin, the moment where the themes of nuclear apocalypse go from subtext to text. Let's hear it. A shadow from the sky, much too big to be a bird. Uh-oh. A screaming, crashing noise louder than I've ever heard. This is it. This is the end. It looked like two big silver trees that somehow learned to soar. Mushroom clouds, it's all coming together. Suddenly, a summer breeze and a mighty lion's roar. We're in the blast radius. Dang it. I killed the dinosaur. I killed the dinosaur. Not they. I. We are the dinosaur, and we've killed ourselves. Boom, boom, akalakalaka, boom. Boom, boom, akalaka, boom, boom. The sounds of the end of the world. Well, that was a wonderful journey you've taken us on. Thank you. So you understand? You believe me about the song? Uh, yeah. I mean, the song's co-writer, Randy Jacobs, said the lyrics were about nuclear Armageddon in an interview a couple decades ago. What? It's not like a secret or anything. I spent so much time deconstructing every line. I mean, it was fun to go through. Next time I get cancelled, I'm getting into archery. Something outdoors. It was great having you on, Elsa. Whatever, I want to go home. Stay tuned, everyone. Coming up next is a spooky story from our spooky story correspondent, Relno the Story Keeper. Why did you wait so long to tell me? 
Hello again, friends. I am Relno the Storykeeper, here with another frightful tale to chill your bones. This is the story of the Midnight Hunter. The year was 1954. A nefarious hunter was stalking the streets of major U.S. cities in the dead of night, seeking victims to drug or poison and then conduct experiments on. Initially, victims were lured back to one of several secret lairs, but soon the hunter became bolder, secretly drugging people at restaurants or bars with increasingly dangerous substances. This dastardly hunter, with drugs in one hand and poisons in the other, was George Hunter White. Under the direction of the CIA, you see, CIA spymaster Sidney Gottlieb, best known as the head of Project MKUltra, was concerned about Soviet advancements in mind control drugs and poisons. Thus, Operation Midnight Climax was born, a sub-project of MKUltra headed by George Hunter White. The project was named after its initial use of sex workers to lure men back to CIA-operated brothels, where the unsuspecting Johns would be drugged or poisoned and then watched by agents from behind a one-way mirror. The experiments varied wildly. In some, attempts were made to brainwash people into committing robberies or murders. In others, various poisons were administered to test their vile effects and longevity. Most of the documents detailing the experiments were destroyed, but a letter from George Hunter White thanking Sidney Gottlieb for the opportunity shed some light on the general vibe. Where else could a red-blooded American boy lie, kill, cheat, steal, rape, and pillage with the sanction and blessing of the All Highest? Pretty good stuff, brother. The operation was shut down in 1963, and George Hunter White died in 1975. But, do you think he was the last hunter a certain agency sent stalking its own citizens? That's all for now. I'm Relno the Storykeeper, reminding you to stay spooky. Alright, what happened? I got tricked. It's not my fault. The, the mist book was your idea. I know, I know. What can I say? These cute little cheeks don't got no sense. Well, I've got to track down Henry Kissinger again. Last I saw, Sonic the Hedgehog was chasing him around. Sonic was still here. Hmm. Well, there's no way Kissinger's getting away from him. He's the fastest thing alive. Uh, catching him wasn't the problem. Holding him was. He was all greased up. Henry Kissinger was all greased up. He was all greased up, head to toe, sliding around. Well, sorry I missed all that. Maybe it's for the best. How is this possibly for the best? If I'm stuck in here, I can't get married or divorced. That's true. Unless you want to marry an old ship or a big gear or something. I, uh, I gotta go. Pikachu. I gotta go. 